So you've received a letter saying you're getting an audit. Does this mean you're packing your bags, skipping go, and heading straight to jail? I'm an actual accountant. I'm gonna to explain to you what actually happens if you get an audit by the tax office. First of all, what actually happens? How do you get notified? And typically it'll be a phone call and a letter. So recently I had a client that got an audit done. The ATO got on the phone. They called me and said, hey, we're going to be sending you a letter. And they like to have an initial phone call with you before they send you the letter. So they don't like to shock you and just send you this letter and says, hey, you're going to jail. You're getting an audit done. It doesn't really work like that. It'll be likely a two-pronged attack, phone call and letter. Now these letters can vary and they don't normally have the word audit just printed across the top. It'll normally say words like a review or we're looking into your obligations. Now, this is just a nice way of them saying it's an audit. Even when they're saying, oh, we're just conducting a review of your tax return. It's an audit of your tax return. Don't be confused. Don't get sucked into their nice language. This is an audit. They are looking into your situation. And if you've done the wrong thing and they find out, then you will receive interest, fines, or some kind of adjustment to your return. But the first thing you really need to do if you've got an audit is understand why you're getting audited. So it will be normally in this letter that will say what they're actually auditing. And normally it will have some kind of explanation about why this has occurred. And it's normally going to occur for one of two reasons. And the first is going to be a completely random audit. Now there's not really much you can do in this case. If they're just doing a completely random audit, then you didn't do anything wrong in particular. You were just the unlucky one that's being chosen to be audited. The other one is a reasoned audit. They've got a reason why they're doing an audit on you. This happens for normally one of two reasons. And the first is that they've discovered something that they think looks a bit odd that they want to look into further. So maybe you've been withdrawing a lot of cash from your bank account and they're thinking, well, are you paying cash wages out to someone? So that's their reason for wanting to look into that further. Or maybe your income doesn't really match what your expenses are. Your expenses are a higher percentage compared to others in your industry. So again, they're going, well, this doesn't really look right. We want to look into this further. Or the other reason that this could occur is that something in your industry or maybe it's your occupation has given rise for them to look into everyone. So maybe you're in the fruit and veg industry and there's been a lot of people that have been paying out cash wages. They might want to dig in further to other people in that industry because they've already gone, hey, we've caught five or six people here. Maybe if we expand that net, there'll be others that are doing the wrong thing as well. Or maybe you're an employee and you work for a particular mining company and they've discovered through some other audits that people have been claiming phone expenses. And when they've discussed with this company, they say that they always cover all phone expenses for all their employees. So now they're going to go, hey, let's audit more of these people and see whether more of them have been claiming something we know they can't claim. Now, these are the more common audits where there is some kind of reason that has given rise to an audit. I don't see many random audits. A lot of them are like, hey, we think there is something that could have gone wrong in this area. We want to dig into them further. Now, I don't want to scare you because they don't actually do that many audits. In all of my time of running my own business, I've barely had any audits on my clients. But... To make sure that you have no issues if you do get ordered, make sure you just hit that subscribe button because I provide lots of good tax tips on this channel. Now let's get into what would happen next if you've received this initial audit letter. Now my most basic advice, if you've received this phone call, you've received this letter, is speak to your accountant or a tax lawyer first before you provide anything. You want to understand thoroughly what you need to provide. What is the question that's being asked before you provide any information? Now, this doesn't mean you can't speak to the ATO. If they call you to let you know they're doing an audit, but just listen to what they're saying. Yep, yeah, no worries. I'll look into it. I'll get that information to you that you're requesting is all you need to provide in this initial phone call. Don't go and start telling them about your activities or give them the information. Wait until you receive that letter so you can thoroughly understand what they are asking. And the reason this is really important is you want to answer the questions they've asked and you want to answer them thoroughly. You don't want to start giving them stuff that's not relevant because that's not going to help your case. For instance, if they ask the question, why have you been withdrawing cash from your bank account on a regular basis? You want to hit them with a two-pronged attack of an explanation of why it's happening. You know, why this is maybe the best business practices for your business or why you're claiming this particular item. And then also you want to hit them with the evidence of receipts, invoices, stuff that might total up those cash withdrawals, for instance. So you're hitting with the explanations and the data to back up. And by doing this, you're really answering their questions thoroughly. So they're going to have a lot of information to go through, but they're going to be able to verify what they've actually asked. And the more detail you can provide, the better in a lot of these situations, as long as it's accurate and matches what you've lodged. Because what they're trying to determine is what have you lodged versus what actually happened. 
And if those things match up, it's going to make your case get the big green tick at the end of the day. So are you going straight to jail? Well, it's very unlikely you're going to even end up in jail unless you've committed major tax fraud. But the good thing is the ATO are very good to deal with in a lot of audit situations. If you're dealing with them well, you want to communicate with them, you want to meet their deadlines, that's a really key one. Sometimes their deadlines can be really unrealistic. Maybe they've got someone away, or you've been away, and you don't have much time between the time the letter was received and when the information is required. If this is the case, speak to them and make sure you get an extension on the due date. Because if you can continue to meet their expectations of due dates and what they require, then it's going to go a long way to furthering your case. Now, obviously, the whole case comes down to, well, have you done the right thing? Because if you know that everything you've lodged is perfectly accurate, you're not going to have any issues no matter what is getting audited. Now, maybe there's some gray areas here or you know you've done the wrong thing. Well, in those situations, you want to make sure you're communicating well with the ATO, disclosing anything that you think might not be right. If it's directly asked to you, go, hey, yeah, I've done it like this. Maybe that wasn't the right way to do it. You know, be open and honest with them is probably going to help your case because at the end of the day, you're dealing with a person on the other end. You know, there will be an ATO officer assigned to your case. And therefore, if you can build up that relationship with them, it's going to help. You don't really want to get on the wrong side where they, maybe they start to go, hey, we're going to dig into further things. Now, while jail is probably unlikely for most people, there are fines and interests that can apply. Now, the ATO do have a table here that go through a few different situations. So if it's failure to take reasonable care, so generally you fail to take reasonable care if you've not done what a reasonable person in the same circumstances would have done, it's a 25% additional penalty based on the shortfall amount. So failure to take reasonable care would be you just haven't really taken much care when doing this. You've just looked over it. Maybe you haven't properly reconciled things or you've just claimed $300 because you thought you could. You just haven't taken much care when lodging your return. We've then got recklessness, which is you are reckless if a reasonable person in your circumstances would have been aware that there was a real risk of a shortfall amount arising and you disregard it or showed indifference to that risk. And that is a 50% penalty. Now, recklessness is more so you know that there could be an issue here and you've just brushed over it. You've gone, oh yeah, that's probably not right. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. And you've just, just skipped past it. You can see that's starting to be a bit more serious than just the failure to take reasonable care. And then you've got intentional disregard. And this is the one you really want to avoid. And that is you intentionally disregard the law if you are fully aware of a clear tax obligation and you disregard the obligation with the intention of bringing about certain results, e.g. underpaying tax. Intentional disregard, you definitely want to avoid this. This is when you know that there is an issue and maybe you've actually created that issue on purpose so you can avoid tax. This is the big red flag that you do not want to be involved in. At the end of the day, if you get an audit, you just have to work with what's in front of you. No one wants to get an audit letter, but if you do get one, you just need to work with the ATO, work with your accountant, work with your tax agent, work with your tax lawyer, whoever else is involved to answer the questions that are in front of you with the information that is accurate. If you've done the right thing, you'll have no issues with getting that big green tick. If you've done the wrong thing, the X is there, there's probably going to be some penalties, but if you self-disclose, they're going to reduce these for you. Now, sometimes the ATO do win on cases, and this is one of the biggest fraud cases that's ever happened when it comes to tax in Australia, where over $60 million in assets were seized. So go and check that out.